Hurricane Lee being called large and powerful as it moves across the Atlantic. There's an increasing likelihood it will affect New England. Right now it's a Category 3 storm with top winds of 115 miles an hour. Just north of Leeward, the Leeward Isle, excuse me, the Leeward Isle Islands, oh goodness, expected to pass just west of Bermuda Thursday. The National Hurricane Center says the most probable scenario is the Canadian Maritimes and Nova Scotia would take a direct hit, but not until the weekend. Yeah. Is that true? It seems to be the case. Okay. We're going to get an update from the National Hurricane Center at the top of the hour, so we'll see what they've tweaked in that path of probability. But at this point, it is going to be staying mostly away from the U.S. mainland and possibly hitting some places uh, along the New England coastline and parts of Maritime Canada. Uh, looking live out, or like time lapse, I should say, out over the skies of our very wet Monday out there and finally saw some much needed rainfall across the region. And we'll take you back towards Hurricane Lee, where currently it is a Category 3 storm, and it is moving towards the north slightly and west as well. And as far as uh, the track of it, it is going to be still uh, something that's uh, going to be of great interest over the next uh, 72 hours. A very active Atlantic right now. I got Hurricane Margo out here. This is mostly just a fish storm spinning out in the middle of nowhere, but two tropical waves now coming off of the coast of Africa. These could be tracking kind of in the path of where Hurricane Lee is headed, and Lee is the one that's going to be causing some possible concern for areas around New England. It is pretty massive, still a Category 3 storm, and it's going to start that turn towards the north over the next 24 hours and continue its track to where it could be up close to areas around New England, and the cone of uh, possibility there uh, does include Cape Cod, portions of New England, and maybe even parts of Canada as well. Here's the wind profile from the European model. They notice it going past Bermuda, so just narrowly swiping that with some wind and waves. And then as it tracks towards the north around Saturday, this particular forecast model has it making landfall at eastern Maine, areas around Nova Scotia as well. And that right front quadrant, this quadrant of the hurricane, is usually what's strongest with the most wave action and wind action. So that'd be the area of greatest concern for storm surge. And then it quickly moves inland as we get later into this coming weekend. We had a pretty soggy day out there for today, and it does continue continue out there. High temperature of 70. We did see some rain more than an inch at Midway, a little lesser amount at O'Hare. Normal high temperature 77. And as we look towards the highs today, well off from yesterday, uh, we did see a 13 degree temperature drop at O'Hare and a nine degree temperature drop at Midway. We saw nothing for sunshine for today. We're going to prove that number over the next couple of days as we get towards tomorrow, especially as you get towards the later part of the afternoon. Sun starts to peak out again, maybe by the evening drive, about 35% of cloud cover, but still some showers are a possibility as we get late tomorrow night into the first part of Wednesday. But the temperatures will start improving after we get through a little cool spell for Tuesday and for Wednesday. Back into the 70s we go, luckily by Thursday, and then even warmer than normal as we get towards the weekend forecast, uh, possibly even getting close to 80 degrees as we get towards Saturday. Right now, temperatures mostly all in the low end of the 60s and now some upper 50s out there. It's one thing about the cloud cover. Keeps things pretty consistent as far as the temperatures go. And a big temperature drop considering 24 hours ago. We did see uh, some temperatures yesterday in the low 80s around Chicago land. Winds mostly relatively light, but they have been out of the north, and that's creating uh, some lake hazards, a high swim risk. Luckily, not a beach day necessarily for tomorrow, but waves along the shoreline of southern Lake Michigan could be up to 6 to 8 feet in some spots. Uh, likely a spot for the strongest wave action would in areas in northwest Indiana, but six foot wave heights are possible along the Chicago shoreline for tomorrow. Ragweed moderate as well as the weed pollen is high for today. Luckily, the rain's probably going to wash some of that out. So tomorrow, these numbers should be a little bit lower for many allergy sufferers out there. And there's that slow moving cold front continuing its slow path across the region. Behind it, we don't totally dry up, but we do get some dry relief for tomorrow, especially during the middle part of the day. Still can't rule out some showers, and we're seeing that light, steady rain right over the city itself, but a little west northwesterly flow starts to clear out the air and this next little pulse of energy in the atmosphere could give us some showers Tuesday night into Wednesday before high pressure builds in sitting right over Canada. That's going to dry us out pretty much completely as we get into the end of the week. So that high pressure system starts moving a little bit south. That little pulse starts moving on top of us by tomorrow in the evening hour. So maybe seven, eight, nine, we could see a couple stray showers, but then high pressure fully takes over. We see nice clear skies Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, even into Saturday. And as that high pressure moves a little bit to the east, we'll start 
start seeing an increase in our temperatures with a southwesterly flow. A little closer to home, the next 24 hours, start seeing those uh, skies clearing out for us. Again, the northwesterly winds tomorrow see some nice sunshine during the day. Then towards the evening, there's that second chance of some pop of precipitation through the evening hours and maybe even the first part of Wednesday morning before the skies fully clear out and we see some nice sunshine for us that will continue pretty much Wednesday, Thursday and into Friday. But again, slight chance for a couple lake effect showers or some drizzly pockets overall. That forecast for tonight looking a little showery out there. We're seeing the scattered light showers in some areas, but a little bit of light rain in the city itself. Those temperatures overnight lows settling down into the mid 50s in a lot of places. Tomorrow, high temperature probably about 67, so a little bit cooler than today. A mostly cloudy morning and then decreasing clouds in the afternoon, but it looks like they're going to come back towards tomorrow later in the evening hours, so a chance for some showers tomorrow night. Outlying areas in the upper 40s and in the city, probably temperature around 50. Temperatures mid-60s on Wednesday, so still cooler than normal. A shower, a sprinkle is possible in the morning, but partly cloudy skies by the afternoon. And that sunny trend takes over fully as we get towards Wednesday afternoon. Thursday, Friday, boosting up our temperatures towards 80 degrees. Very nice weekend. At least the first half looks solidly sunny. A little more clouds and perhaps a sprinkle or two on Sunday. But overall, a pretty nice at least half of the weekend, maybe two-thirds of the weekend looking really nice, which for September is not a bad deal at all. No, it isn't. Yeah.